The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, took part in the meeting of the Global Coalition to Counter ISIL, which was held at the U.S. State Department in Washington. He noted that the meeting was an opportunity to reassess the efforts exerted to combat this terrorist organization and the progress made by the coalition in fighting terrorism on various fronts, as well as rearrange priorities in line with developments to ensure the rapid elimination of the organization. Sheikh Khalid stressed the importance of the war on ISIL in terms of the countries that must participate and in terms of the terrorist organizations that must be eliminated in the context of this war so as to not exclude other extremists and terrorist organizations. He added that mechanisms of confrontation are not limited to military and field efforts but also extend to the intellectual, financial, political and social aspects. The minister stressed the commitment of Bahrain to support the international coalition to fight ISIL and to cooperate with all regional and international efforts aimed at combating terrorism. He called for continued cooperation and communication with Iraq during the next phase to ensure success in this war, reconstruct the infrastructure of the affected Iraqi cities and provide humanitarian support to Iraqi children and those liberated from ISIL. A statement released by the Global Anti-ISIS Coalition at its summit in Washington this week says 60% of Iraq and nearly a third of the territory taken in Syria has been liberated from the extremists. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson told coalition partners that progress has been made but that more needs to be done and member countries are being asked to step up their efforts. Marty Johnson reports from our Washington bureau. In his first address to the ministers of the global coalition working to defeat ISIS, the U.S. Secretary of State called for increased commitment from other partner countries. The United States will do its part, but the circumstances on the ground require more from all of you. Tillerson said 75 percent of the coalition campaign against ISIS in Syria and Iraq was undertaken by the United States, 25 percent by partners with the ratios reversed in humanitarian efforts and the partners taking the majority of responsibility. Bahrain can do more also besides the military effort, we can do more with the messaging. We have uh, very able diplomats that are part of the messaging team and we can always enhance that with new ideas, so we'll do our part. The kingdom's importance cannot be overstated according to the administration. The participation of Bahrain is extremely important in this conference. So the United States is proud to be a partner in this coalition. It's a um, Right now, there are 68 members of this coalition, all working together on one priority, and that priority is the defeat of ISIS. The Trump administration says it will continue the policy of sending U.S. special forces and experts to train regional proxies to fight ISIS on the ground. And Minister Al Khalifa says the kingdom is seeing the way forward with refugees. We've always done our part in helping refugees in uh, and their education and providing education for the young and uh, we've always done our part but once we see the plans for stabilizations clear and uh, we see the roles to be taken by countries we'll, we'll do our part secretary of state tillerson also said success in the fight against isis will depend heavily on coalition commitment including two billion dollars in new pledges to help restore refugees to their homelands Reporting for Bahrain TV, I'm Marty Johnson at the State Department. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of Jordan, Ayman Safadi, on the sidelines of the meeting of the Global Coalition to Counter ISIL held in Washington, where they reviewed the agenda on the Arab summit to be held in, under the leadership of the Jordanian monarch, King Abdullah II. Sheikh Khalid expressed his sincere wishes for the success of the upcoming Arab summit, affirming the strong relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Jordan in light of the country's two countries' leaderships and the strong foundations and vision to develop a joint Arab action to achieve security and stability in the region, praising the progress of these relations in all fields and the benefit to the two countries and peoples. Mr. Safadi expressed the pride of Jordan in the distinguished relations with the Kingdom of Bahrain, stressing his country's keenness to further strengthen ties and cooperation and wishing the Kingdom further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, also met with the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Frederica Mogherini, also on the sidelines of the meeting of the Global Coalition to Counter ISIL. The Minister praised the friendly relations between Bahrain and the European Union, highlighting the important role played by the EU in achieving security and stability at regional and international levels. 
He expressed appreciation for the efforts of Mogherini to develop relations between the GCC and the EU. For her part, Mogherini praised the efforts of Bahrain in supporting regional and international efforts to enhance security, establish peace and address the crises facing the countries of the region. Sheikh Khalid also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Australia, Julie Bishop, where she reviewed the friendly relations between the two countries and means of enhancing them in various fields, affirming the importance of visits between officials of the two countries to broaden fields of cooperation at all levels. A number of topics of common interest were also reviewed during the meeting. Also as part of his official visit to the United States of America, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met today in Washington with the National Security Advisor to the American President, Herbert McMaster. The meeting reviewed the historical ties between Bahrain and the USA, their advanced course, diversity and progress in all fields. They exchanged views on the most important regional and international developments and issues of mutual interest. The minister expressed Bahrain's appreciation for its strategic alliance with the United States and its keenness to expand cooperation to promote common interests and contribute to the manifestation of security and stability in both countries. The minister hailed the efforts of the US to establish stability throughout the world and its constant efforts to find ways to resolve the crises facing the international community, in particular terrorism in all its forms. McMaster affirmed the United States' keenness to continue and develop close cooperation with Bahrain and consolidate bilateral relations and efforts to establish security and peace in the region. He praised Bahrain's efforts to promote stability in the region and in the fight against terrorism, affirming the USA's support for these efforts while wishing the Kingdom further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputized the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khaled bin Ali Al Khalifa, to patronize the Arab Lawyers Union Permanent Office Conference under the theme, Gulf Security is Part of Arab Security. The conference's goal is to deal with regional issues and to protect the issues of member lawyers from different Arab countries. The conference will be held for three days and will include seminars and workshops where participants will discuss a number of topics, such as the role of women in the legal professions and international investment conflicts. Bahrain's hosting of the conference comes after 16 years of absence, and observers confirm that the Manama summit will result in effective recommendations and have an impact on the trade union and rights movement. Arabian Gulf security is part of Pan-Arab security. This was the title of today's Congress of Arab Lawyers Union Assembly meeting, held in Bahrain after 16 years of absence. The permanent office's literary fiscal report was discussed in addition to several national, occupational and regulatory issues. Moreover, suggested adjustments to the main legislation of the Union. It is about the, the security of the Gulf and how we are going to deal as a lawyers on that uh, occasion. And uh, we as a lawyers, we are inviting uh, all Arab lawyers here in Bahrain. And uh, we have, of course, a lot of agenda that we are going to start. And uh, beside that, actually, we have uh, a woman conference also, uh, lawyers as well as the, we have another uh, uh, conference for a workshop for the arbitrations. Delegations from multiple Arab countries including jurists, lawyers, members of the judiciary, researchers and legal advisors were welcomed by the Bahraini Legal Society. Many chances for Arab lawyers, for GCC lawyers, for Bahraini lawyers in the political and economic and social decision in these countries. Our societies are in great need for lawyers to talk about issues that others do not dare to talk about. And our unity is very important to exchange information about the critical situation in our societies and in our countries. Not only Arab countries, a delegation from Paris was there to share the experience. The director of uh, school law of uh, Versailles and we are very happy to have to participate to this conference and to share experience. The conference also discussed the Sultanate of Amman Lawyers Association membership application, presented by the Arab Lawyers Union's General Secretariat, declaring its acceptance. It has been announced today that uh, Oman uh, Lawyer Association is going to be a part of the Arab Lawyers uh, Union. And uh, we are very delighted and honored to become a part of this union uh, as it will benefit uh, the Omani lawyers in a really great way. 
A spirit of love and familiarity encouraged healthy discussions aiming for a better future for the trade union and rights movement. Where there is unity, there is always victory. Bahrain Bar Association hosts the Congress of Arab Lawyers Union Assembly meeting tied to the Arabian Gulf security is part of Pan-Arab security. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdelrafour. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosted the 67th Committee of Governors of GCC Monetary Institutions and Central Banks meeting, chaired by Bahrain Central Bank Governor Rashid Al-Maraj, with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Dr. Abdelatif al -Zayani. Dr. al -Zayani affirmed that efforts exerted by the governors of GCC monetary institutions and central banks enhance cooperation, integration and stabilize the financial sectors of the GCC countries, despite international financial and economic challenges. He added that the project of establishing and building a linkage of payment systems between the GCC countries, which was agreed on during the GCC summit that was held in December 2016, is considered one of the most important banking and financial projects between the GCC countries, authorizing the monetary institutions and central banks of the Gulf to own and manage the project through the establishment of an independent company owned and funded by monetary institutions and central banks in the GCC states. The visiting French parliamentary delegation held today an open session with a number of representatives from different religions and sects who live in Bahrain. The representatives reviewed their living situation inside Bahrain, affirming that the kingdom is the land of security and peace, they also noted that the people of Bahrain have lived along side by side with a diversity of cultures and religions in addition to sharing their values and beliefs. They also asserted that the Kingdom of Bahrain represents tolerance, peace and love. Meanwhile, they lauded His Majesty the King's efforts and reform project, stressing His Majesty's support in establishing worship places for the different religious sects in Bahrain, in addition to the freedom of worship. For its part, the French Bahraini Friendship Group asserted that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His, of His Majesty the King, presented a pioneering model of coexistence between all religions and sects, noting the people of Bahrain's tolerance and love to all religions. They also praised His Majesty the King's efforts and reform project that enhanced concepts of peaceful coexistence and cooperation between the different components of Bahraini society.